Hello and welcome to the Pedicated Swashbuckler. My name is Marin and I'm attending a ball. No, not that one. Another one. Okay, so if you had told me when I was like, I don't know, 12, that I would be the kind of person who would go to balls, you know, who would attend balls, on a semi-regular basis, I would have laughed in your face and crossed my fingers and hoped that you were right. So I am very happy to have become that person. Um, I am, as you know, going to a ball in Bath uh, this spring, in an 1840s ensemble, hopefully. But before that, I'm attending a different ball, uh, uh, the Oslo Opera Ball. Uh, that is in February, early February, and the theme for that ball is Venice. And I thought, what a great, great opportunity to make another Anne Bamford creation. In her list of inventory, and I've explained the whole Anne Bamford thing in an earlier video, uh, one of the things that really stand out is a brocaded silk nightgown. Now, a nightgown is not a gown that you sleep in, all right? That's the modern usage of the word. Uh, in the 18th century, a nightgown is a pretty dress you wear at night, in the evening. Uh, usually what we would today call a robe anglaise, usually, where you have pleats down the backs, but instead of them sort of falling free off the body, like a sac or a francaise or a negligee, they are seamed down to the back. I made one already, the uh, brown day gown. Um, this one, however, is going to be loads fancier. I'm going to make it to fit over pocket hoops. Um, there's just one problem, and that is the brocaded silk bit. Because brocaded silk in the 18th century was super, super expensive. It's a real kind of investment. As, frankly, it is today. Um, and I can't afford to spend all that money <laughs> on brocaded silk. So instead, I'm going to use a brocaded cotton. Hang on. This one, a silvery brocaded cotton. And to spice it up even more, it's gonna be embroidered. Not by me, not by hand, but by my good friend Turun who uh, does machine embroidery uh, for a living, among other things. So I'm very excited. <laughs> Wanna come along? So since I've made a variety of dresses before, um, all including, you know, some of the elements that I'm going to put into this dress, uh, I haven't, I didn't want to like spend a lot of time showing you exactly how I make the sleeves, exactly how I make the uh, the stitches on the front of the bodies, because you can see that in my negligee video, in my um, printed cotton gown video, in my brown gown video. So I've just gone ahead and done it, um, and I've done I've done quite a lot. Um, these are the fronts, and they are. Oh, I love this fabric so much! It's so shiny. It's even more shiny uh, in real life than on camera. So these are the fronts. I've just stitched uh, the fronts and up to where the skirts will attach. I've not done the side seams. I've not done the arm size, and I've not done the uh, shoulder straps. So I've got two of those. I've made the sleeves. These are our sleeves. Made them the way I usually make them. By laying the lining and the sleeve on top of each other and then stitching the long sleeve seam and then like turning them and that's when I do the hemming on the cuff edge. I've even uh, started making some sleeve ruffles. Uh, so these are quite small for now. Um, I might 
make some bigger ones. I don't know. We'll see. I got some fabric um, that I've ordered that's coming in, some silk for making like white ruffles to go under these um, and also like a white uh, tucker um, if you hear like crashing noises that's just my cat um, yeah so when that comes I'm, I can get on with that and I've stitched the back linings together just very simply and press those seams and then I've gone ahead and I've stitched the uh, because this is going to be a and what's called an English gown with a with a fitted back. Um, the uh, like I did on the brown gown, uh, the American Guide to 18th, American, sorry American Duchess Guide to the 18th Century Dressmaking uh, recommends that you kind of lay your lining a little bit skewed. Like if you imagine that the edge of the fabric goes here, then you place your lining like this and then you stitch up that sort of skewed line and then you can cut into that. So I've stitched up that line and I'm kind of, I'm ready to do the cut. I'm a little bit apprehensive because uh, when I made this last, I used like a full width of fabric. Um, and I just made the cut in like solid fabric. However, uh, now I'm, <laughs> I'm using two widths of fabric because I need all this fabric to fit over my hoops. So I'm actually going to be cutting into my seam, which would not be a problem if this was machine stitched. I'm not sure my hand stitching is kind of sturdy enough, so I might have to go in and like reinforce it later. But we'll see. So that's where we're at now. I'm going to do the cut, show that to you, and then we're going to start pleating the back. So I'm done fiddling with my um, my back pleats. I think they look nice. They look even on both sides. I've been measuring them to make sure. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to mark where the pleats stop because because the pleats kind of uh, peter out uh, or how you say well because of the angle of the pleats on the back, the line here isn't straight. And I don't want to end up with my 
um, my lining sort of over, going over. I'm going to add decoration to this bit anyway, but I still don't want my line to go above the, the back of the dress. So I'm just going to go in with a couple of pins and just mark out approximately. And this will also make it easier to like avoid having the, um, the seams in the back sort of flop around. And I know that the, I've seen instructions where they tell you to do this onto the lining, but I find that the lining will shift around on you and then you'll end up with something that looks very straight and then you turn it around and then the lining is not straight and everything is cocked up. So, uh, turning this now. This is the in not in any way as neat backside. But that's okay, backsides aren't supposed to be neat, are they? Um, or inside, if you like. Uh, I have um, mostly managed to keep my seams outside of the pleats. That's on purpose. That's to avoid um, a lot of bulk in the back. So I'm just gonna go in and so. Um, yeah, this looks nice. This looks neat and good. Um, so what I will do now is I will lay the lining on top of this. Um, wrong sides together. Just you know, like this. Just making sure, actually put some pins in just to make sure um, that the back seam of my lining matches the back seam on my bodice. And then what I will do is I will pin this entire lining onto uh, the fabric, turn it again, look at it from the right side again, make sure that the pleats are still looking good. Um, and then I will be ready to stitch down the pleats. I think what I will do first is I will remove, as you can see there's a lot of fabric on the sides of this. Um, I probably remove some of that just to avoid having to like lug around a lot of uh, heavy fabric when I'm sewing uh, because that can not only is that impractical but it can also like uh, change um, or uh, affect the way your pleats hang and your stitches because it just pulls on everything. So that is the plan, pin this down to the fabric, remove some excess fabric from the sides and then do a lot of brick stitching. So I've just pinned my dress together and uh, put it on my, uh, my little uh, dress form. Um, just to make sure that it still fits because I thought these edges here they seem too straight when I put the pattern flat down but looking at it now it looks good it looks right I'm going to need a big stomacher but that's fine and I'm also going to put uh, some robings on this and they will probably go out like I don't know, some centimeters out into this so that'll be fine um, looking at the back, uh, oops, sorry, the pleats are now all stitched down, uh, 
they're actually almost invisible in this fabric but once you get close enough they're really nice i need to i need to press them but apart from that yeah i i, I really like these pleats um and the skirt i've just left the same length for like this part that goes over the hoops i have just left that length for the back as well which means that i get a tiny little train which is perfect that's exactly what i want so what i need to do now is i need to go in here and so i'm not sure if you can see but i've actually based it up this is where the lining goes and what i need to do now and i can actually see i've i stitched these uh I've stitched these these a little bit too far down I think. I need I think I actually need to like remove the stitches up to like here. These these stitches. But that's fine. Um and then I need to like cut the skirt along here. Um so I can fold this edge up and stitch it to you know and just baste it and then I can this bit I can fold down and baste and then I can do all the pleating of the skirt because all of this extra <laughs> skirt here is going to be pleated into this part of the bodice which is not a lot not a lot of bodice to pleat this into and then of course I need uh, I need the to cut the front skirt that will go oops, sorry um, in Sort of here i think i uh, yeah this is where i kind of stopped it so i'll it'll fall down like like down there which i think i think that'll be nice i'm very happy so far and i'm also very excited <laughs> about the uh, embroidered panels i know that she uh, that Torun has finished the embroidered panels for the robings and she's working on the ones for the skirt and then if we have time I will embroider a stomacher and also a petticoat if not I'll use some of the ones I have which is is fine so yeah that's that's the new that's the bit coming up next I need to do the cutting the folding up and basting and the pleating on this um Oh yeah, and I need to stitch the side seams together. That actually comes first. Because uh, this is just pinned very roughly together. And then I can do the front bit. Here we are. Uh, I have done a lot of sewing since I filmed anything last. One of the reasons why I haven't really filmed anything is because I, I've done a lot of sewing like sitting in the sofa, watching TV. I also recently caught Covid. Which is the reason why my voice is a little weird and also the reason if there's any weird cutting it's because I I had to like leave the room and cough and then come back um but other than that I'm good I it's like the third time I have it or something it's yeah it's it's fine um but we have a dress or most like more dress than last time you saw it the bodice is done um and I have attach the skirt to the bodice mostly um i did actually uh, it, it was completely done i had stitched all the skirt panels to the bodice i then undid this side because i wasn't very happy with the way this skirt was hanging and i'm not still not like thrilled with it i'll still fiddle a little bit with it um i've just unpicked it from this edge here and then i'm going to just play around with the pleats a little bit and see if I can get it to hang the way I want it to hang. But that's fine. Um, it will go like around the back. You can see that the, the pleats, um, the back pleats are all done nicely into the skirt. Um, lots of lovely volume in the skirt that you can't quite see on camera but I'll show you later. Uh, it's really very luxurious, which is what I want. Um, and you can also see... Embroidery! Isn't it amazing? I love it so much. I think it's just brilliant. Um, I, I'm so happy with the way this turned out. I am also going to have 
embroidery on the front and I have got those panels here um, here they are and they're so beautiful like just look at this so gorgeous I'll, uh, I'll link the the website of Torun who made these who embroidered this uh, down below because she's really good um, and these are gonna go like over over so uh, yeah and then I am also going to have embroidered panels on like the front skirts um, but they're not done yet but they're still like a month and a half until the ball so we'll be fine so this is where we're at I'm gonna I have also I've done <laughs> I've finished this is like in like bits and pieces I have made this which is going to be my tucker if you remember on my black negligee I have like a little ruffled white thing around the edges that was very common for gowns for like evening wear, ballroom wear, that weren't, they didn't have a fichu, they didn't have anything to like cover the chest area. This area, uh, instead you would have this like little gathered white, um, yeah, just, just you know, to fill that in. So that's done, I made that from a silk voil. And from the same silk oil, I've also made, and as well as the, the fabric of the dress itself, I've also made some sleeve cuffs, and I have made sleeves. I have not quite attached the cuffs to the sleeves, and I'll explain why in a minute. But here are the cuffs. There's one layer of the brocade fabric, and then there's two layers of this nice, very, very fine, very lightweight silk. It may basically it's translucent as you can see it's a very very see-through which is glorious and very luxurious and I like it um, so this is what we're at at the moment there's still some things that needs to be done I need to do well the first thing I need to do is I need to f like finish fiddling with this side of the skirt so that it hangs the way I want it to for a moment I was like, oh, well, I'm going to cover this bit with skirt panels anywhere and maybe, maybe it doesn't matter. And I was like, well, I will be very unhappy if it doesn't hang nicely. Um, I will, you know, it'll irk me and I won't wear the dress as much. This is the side that I've un unpicked. And because I thought this, ha this side hangs really nicely and this side is a little wonky. I have this weird kind of going on here that I'm not too happy with. However, the skirt panels will be attached here and they will be at least as wide as the uh, the panels for the for the bodies, so at least like this wide. And I think I should actually attach those first and then shove everything up into, you know, I think we might be onto something. I think this might be a good idea. We'll see. Anyway, so okay, maybe I'll need to fiddle with this a little bit more, maybe unpick this. What I need to do now is I need to set in the sleeves. And uh, this is the reason why I haven't attached the sleeve cuffs yet, or the ruffles. That's because I need to fit the sleeve to make sure that this bit here actually comes up like the inside of my elbow. Uh, so that... Is this the right one? Yes. Uh, so that when I put the sleeve on, it actually looks like this. You know that this is... It actually looks nice, it looks elegant when I bend my arm it's actually you know because if this say that this ends up on the outside uh, it's gonna look very strange indeed or if it ends up a little much little too much on the inside 
um, it's gonna do okay as long as I stand like this and at the moment I turn my arm out it's gonna look weird because this bit is gonna end up on the top of my arm instead of like falling to the sides so this is what when these are fitted I can attach these um, I think actually what I usually do when I fit sleeves I've probably done this before and gone through it but in case I haven't um, when I fit sleeves what I usually do is I stitch them to the underside of the just putting the sleeve in here um, I stitch them to the underside to about sort of halfway up just do a nice back stitch and then I put this on and I play around with this extra width and make sure that I don't get like um like a poof sleeve on top because that's not very 18th century where you want your sleeve volume to sit is back here back at this point uh, you want some pleats and some wrinkles and some wrinkles here I like the the back point and that's because you want even in a fancy dress that you're just gonna wear to a ball you want to be able to like move your arm forward so I'm gonna set my sleeves and then I'm gonna attach these sleeve cuffs I will fiddle more with these I will attach the beautiful beautiful embroidered str like strips fabric I'm actually as you can see <laughs> I've cut like little extra pieces I'm actually gonna line these because with this one in the back I I've covered the raw edge with it and flipped it over and stitched it down that's fine that's the same I'm gonna do with the skirt pieces to be honest however this one <laughs> needs to be able to lift so that I can place pins I need to basically be able to like lift it up and place pins underneath because that's how I'm going to be attaching this to the stomacher so I'm gonna be lining these pieces I'm gonna to have to like even out the hem and hem it basically and then if I have time which I think I will, I hope I will, I will make a petticoat because so you see I have I have more of this fabric as well as some scraps that I cut off when I did this so I think I will make a petticoat and a stomacher out of matching fabric I was thinking of wearing this with the white stomacher and white petticoat, uh, not the embroidered one, with the, but the, the trimmed one that I made a year and a half ago. Um, I'll link them somewhere in this vicinity. But it would be nice to have a set of matching as well even though that's not specified in Anne Bamford, we're already deviating a little bit by using cotton instead of silk and embroidery, even though she's not specifying embroidery. Um, uh, so that's what we're going to be doing.
know why I'm turning away from the camera. It's not like you can catch COVID through YouTube. Um, I'm not a computer virus, I promise.